Welcome to Radio Friends. This is Tuesday. It's December the 17th, and we've got one guest today, and one guest that we get uh, quite a few comments on when, when we have you on here from time to time. Bill Wickersham, welcome back to Radio Thank Friends. Thank you, Bill. Paul. Uh, you're here to talk about something that is very close and dear to your heart, and that's the uh, UFO phenomenon. Correct. Um, and you wanted to start off, you wanted to make a couple of announcements. You well, did. you know, I've been on in other times, and yeah. so I have people ask me questions. And uh, as I may have mentioned on another program last April, the uh, Paradigm Research Group in Bethesda, Maryland, mm -hmm. sponsored a five-day conference at the end of April into May uh, on UFO disclosure. Disclosure of the UFO and extraterrestrial presence uh, that is visiting us. They had uh, f some f uh, 40 people who testified, people like the former defense minister of Canada, Paul Hellyer, astronaut uh, uh, Edgar Mitchell, mm -hmm. physicist Stanton Friedman, folks like that. For 30 hours they testified and they testified before f six former members of Congress, and it was chaired by former uh, Senator Mike Ravel of Alaska. Excellent, excellent meeting. So what came out of this? Well, what came out is, number one, some, not enough, but some press, uh, some papers covered it. The Washington Post sent their humor writer, as they usually mm -hmm. do. I remember we talked about yeah, that. But, but, and they did it again. You know. But uh, there were some other newspapers, and the real upshot is a film that's being produced regarding the testimony. It will be about a two-hour uh, uh, film uh, called The Truth Embargo, and it really goes after academics and journalists who are unwilling to take a hard look uh, at, this, at this issue. Then those DVDs, they will have one for every member of Congress. It will be on his or her desk. And so they can't claim uh, they never heard of it. Mm -hmm. Some of the best testimony in the world. Okay. So that happened in April? April, yes. April of this year. One question I have for you. You, you, you were uh, a retired educational psych psychologist, right? I am an educational psychologist. I An educated man. You work for the university, you're still teaching, you're yeah. still teaching. In, in, you, peace, in peace studies, we should, yeah. should know. What do, you, what do you say to people when they come up to you and say, wait a minute, now you're a pretty educated guy, you're going on about these UFOs, what's, what's, what's going on in your head? Well, uh, it's like a couple of other subjects I've dealt with, the issues of, of war and peace and destructive human interaction. Very difficult problem. It's a macro problem. Most folks say, why would you waste your time on that? Ultimately, Paul, everything is political. Political uh, attitudes, if they're to be changed, have to have what? Education. Education has to have research, has to have time, money, and energy. Now, this issue that we're talking about here, and by the way, I'm also a student of educational philosophy. So philosophy informs much of what I do, and I latch on to that, my interest in educational psychology, which has to do with learning, how people learn, what they learn, what's worth learning, et cetera, et cetera. The philosophic uh, mission of most universities, I think most academics would agree, it's the search for truth, it's the search for good, it's the truth for beauty, for health, for justice, things that sound like glittering generalities, but to me they are not. And so one of the things you do as an educational philosopher, and he, all people have their own philosophies, but in my line, I, I try to set a hierarchy. What are the important issues that aren't being addressed? And this is one of the this important issues. This is one issues. of the, very, to me, is. Yeah. In fact, if the extraterrestrial hypothesis is true, as the French are saying, as Edgar Mitchell is saying, and a lot of people are saying, if it is, it's the most important topic in human history. It affects everything we do, from mm -hmm. politics to education to religion to science, technology. If you had the ability to look into the future, say 10 years from now or 20 years from now, how do you think we'll be addressing this issue? The same, or do you think some advancements will you know, be made? I really can't answer that question too well. Uh, because uh, somebody else is in control of the phenomenon. It's not human beings. And uh, there are some theories of the, the leaky embargo theory, for instance. 
which says that folks who may be advanced to you in technology could be a billion years, for God's sake, uh, may be dealing with us in a way that we can't even begin to understand. Now, there are people who claim they've had contact, two CIA people at this recent meeting who claim they had been in the presence of, of, uh, of ETs, uh, and, and in this case, living ETs. Hmm. So I, I, you know, so, my, so how much how much credibility do you give to that? I, I, I think the the tongue and truth. In fact, what I would suggest anybody who's interested in this, simply uh, Google uh, "citizen hearing anonymous." Anonymous. In this case, the man would not give his name. He's he's dying. He may have died since deathbed kind of thing. But uh, he was in the CIA in 1954 and visited, according to him, what is now Area 51 at the behest of President uh, Eisenhower uh, and Nixon. For that okay, it's, ca it's called what? Google what? It's called, if you would Google the following, Citizen Hearing, C-I-T-I-Z-E-N, okay. Hearing Anonymous. And YouTube, if you put YouTube on that, you can see the man's, and you can see whether you believe it or not. Okay, no. all right. We're just about out of time. Anything else you want to leave people to think about? Well, we, you know, we did have the uh, Osher Lifelong Learning course. We uh -huh. had the largest enrollment of any class that's ever Lifelong been. Learning. Yeah, of any class of, of, ever. Right. So how was that accepted? Very well. And, and the people, that, see, there are a lot. Now, of, that was the last. Uh, that was in June. I in believe June. it was June. And we're so, doing another one in March. So this coming March, you're doing another class at Osher Lifelong Learning. That's right. On UFOs. And it will be called UFOs Cover Up and Disclosure. And that U was UFOs Reality Discovery. I mean, UFO <laughs> Reality Cover Up and Disclosure. All right. So if you're interested in that and you're teaching the class? I'm facilitating. It's a film, film portrayal. Okay. We're showing Osher Lifelong Learning starting in March. And what is it, an eight-week? Uh, it, this one will be, uh, I believe, six. Six weeks. Yeah. Okay. Bill, thank you so much for coming by. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Well, I appreciate you letting me yeah. do this. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Bill Wickersham, uh, we're out of time for today. Tomorrow, the Truman Leadership Project, and we're going to tell you about a special event that is taking forth and forth on uh, January the 4th in honor of our good friend Irene Haskins. All right, and Sutu Forte is part of that along with Bill Clark. Our program directed by Travis McMillan of the Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director is Sifun Oyoung and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. And if there's something you'd like to hear or see, drop me an email, pepperp.missouri.edu.